Hi, my name is Caroline. I'm a historical food and crafts demonstrator and I run Pario Gallico, um, my own company. I usually work on food and I also do make some pigments. So I will also show you how to make your own pigments from the earth where you live or even the rocks you can find when you go on a walk, go on a hike, local or not, and how to turn it into a paint that you can use wherever you like. I really, really like the concept that everybody living somewhere will have a different colour in the ground. You can walk around, you can go on holiday or genuinely you can go in the park and find anything clayish or any type of rocks that you can then turn into your local colours. Where I live, and I live in Herefordshire, the ground is very brick coloured, very terracotta coloured. So if you find a form of clay on the beach, leave it to dry for moments, um, grind it into a powder and the finest powder will make the best pigments. If you need to grade it to really do some painting, then you take that ground powdered pigment, put it in some water, really mix it well, leave it to stay for a few minutes, maybe a couple of hours sometimes, and all the very heavy particles and the grit will fall at the bottom. Now, take the coloured water from the top, pour it in a dish, and the very finest particles are still in suspension in the water. Leave it to dry, leave it to evaporate, in the sun, near a radiator, anything like that and you will have to powder it again, but now all the finest particles are only them together. And you have a finely graded pigment. So depending on where you live, you can genuinely make art or even paint your house with the local colors. And we have now archeological evidence proving that some of these houses in the Iron Age, the round houses, were painted both inside and outside, probably much more with local colors so imagine also your surroundings with houses painted the color of the floor, wherever you go. For example, oh, this is one, a test piece I made. These are, well, yellow ochre, green earth, chalk, charcoal, bit of quite rare purple ochre from the forest of Dean, so very close to where I live. But the closest is this one. The terracotta I show you how to make and comes really from the field on the other side of the path. There you go. That's a really good example of what you can do, paint on wood with the local colors you have. Try on stone, try on paper, even try mixing them in lime to make some lime washings for your house. But what I usually uh, use and you can transport fairly easily, eggs. Use the egg yolk mixed with a bit of water, a bit of pigment, and you can paint on wood. It will stay quite a long time. So you have different colored earths or rocks that gives you different color. Some of the most common ones will you, you will find pretty much everywhere around the world. Um, you can find them in the New Forest, you can find them in the Forest of Dean, around any iron mines. You have yellow ochre, red ochre, and if you're lucky, purple. Green earth comes from northern Italy or southern France sometimes. Apparently you can find some in Cornwall as well, but I never found any. To make blue is a bit more complicated because it's one of the primary colors, so you can't mix it really. But you have to find a blue stone, a blue precious stone or a blue earth. But genuinely a lot of people, especially the Egyptians, were using lapis lazuli. So it sounds a bit expensive, but you have to grind it by hand, which is much harder to do than grinding an earth or a clay. But you end up with a really, really deep, beautiful blue with sometimes specks of gold colors. So I really encourage you to just go outside, uh, walk around, find the colors you have in your local area, in your floor, and make a paint from it. Just have a go and yeah, enjoy yourself.